Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make some really sweet personalized fridge magnets. And I have made these for, oh my gosh, like a decade now. I haven't done them in a while, but I started making these when my husband and I first got married and we had our first house because I wanted to make every little space of our house homey, including the refrigerator. And so I made these cute little um, glass bead magnets and they're super fun and super easy. Um, and they are really fun because you can personalize them for the season. So I'm gonna show you how I'm going to do that. And more importantly, I'm gonna show you how you can do them really quickly. We're gonna be using five different materials. Well, they're this all paper, but we're gonna be using five different prints. And instead of feeding these individually through the Cricut, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you a little trick for just feeding them all at the same time through the machine and getting them all cut at one time. So it's gonna be super easy. So what you're gonna need for this project are these little glass beads, and I will link them for you. I believe I got them at Michael's, but they're super fun to work with, and they just make a really polished little magnet um, at the end. You're also going to need some scrapbook paper, and you can pick any types that you would like. I'm currently doing stuff for summer and spring, summer, but, um, um, you can do Christmas prints, you can do fall or autumn prints, you can do, let's see, um, spring, summer, any type of fun print for any, so these can be very seasonal. So you will just need a little bit. So I grabbed a little variety here and I would love to tell you where I got each individual um, scrapbook print, but quite honestly, I was a scrapbooker a long time ago and I hoarded scrapbook paper like nobody's business and I just loved it. So while I would love to tell you where I got everything. That's just impossible because I've had some of this stuff for quite a while. But um, just get a little bit. You are only going to need tiny pieces. So you can get little prints that you have as leftovers or you can use bigger pieces that you have and just trim them down. And I'll show you guys in a minute how to do that. You're going to need some hot glue. You are going to need some Mod Podge. And then if you would like, you can use a little um, foam brush. But I'll show you another way you can do it if you don't have foam brushes. You're going to need some little magnets as well. And I'll link these down below as well. And then a measuring tape is going to help us just start getting everything prepped for the project and a paper trimmer is going to come in handy as well. Um, these class beads, they're called Art Minds. I believe I got them at Michael's and they just come in this little bag. What I do recommend is before you work with them, I recommend that you um, just wash them off. I just rinse them with water. Sometimes they come with a little bit of dust on them. If you find them in like mesh bags especially, they can kind of come a little bit, um, I don't want to say dirty because they're not dirty but they just kind of have like a little dusty film on them so I always just kind of wash them off before using them just to make sure they're nice and polished and clean. Okay so what we're going to do is we are going to measure our little tiny glass beads and they are not all perfectly the same size so um, you're going to want to just make sure you know that um, so if you are measuring the biggest one you're going to want to size down for your smaller ones so I would recommend maybe choosing a smaller one to measure so I'll do this one and it's looking like I have just about an inch to uh, one and one eighth. So I'm gonna just say one inch, I think. Maybe, let's see. Actually, I'm gonna go one, one and an eighth for this. Okay, so I measured those. So now what we're going to do is we are going to trim down all of our little pieces with our paper trimmer into two by two inch squares. So you're just gonna take your paper trimmer. This is one that is from Cricut and I love it because this little arm, um, I'll try to get it out here, it comes out and it extends so you can measure bigger pieces of paper as well. And then of course you can close it um, if you are working with a little smaller project. Project. But what you're going to do is just take your paper and you're going to just measure out two inches by two inches. And you're going to do that for each piece of paper. So in the end, you are just going to have tiny little pieces. So go ahead and do that. I'm going to do it for all five pieces and then we'll get everything ready to put on our mat. 
So now that I have all of my little pieces cut out, I'm gonna show you before we go into design space how we're gonna put them on the mat. So usually I do my designing and design space and then load my materials on the mat, but it's gonna be really important that our materials are actually loaded first for this type of project. So um, that way it's just gonna help us arrange things in design space so that we can cut all of our materials on one mat. So what we're going to do is instead of placing these individually through the Cricut one at a time, we're gonna put all of them down on the mat at the same time and send the mat through once. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, again, these are two by two inch squares, so I'm just gonna line them up right on the mat right next to each other. So this will go from the zero to the two, this will go from the two inches to four inches, and so on. And I'm just lining them up in their little spots very easily. Okay. So there is our last one. So now we have them all lined up on the mat. And now what we're going to do is now that they are all on the little mat together, we can refer to our mat as we go into design space and get all the little circles cut out. Okay, so now that we are in Cricut Design Space, we know that our little circles need to be one and one eighth of an inch. So what we're going to do is we are gonna come over to the Shapes box and we are going to select the circle. And then what we're going to do is we are gonna come up to the size and we are just gonna say 1.12, that's roughly the right size. I'll make these bigger so you can see. And then what we'll do is we'll just make these a pink color, which is fine. And we're gonna be creating five of them. Now, you can make as many of these as you want. They are so easy to make. So if you wanted to make a whole bag of them, do that. I'm just making five because that's all I really need. I don't like a ton on my fridge and I just need a few to get me through spring and summer and have that really nice um, seasonal look. So I'm just gonna do five today. So I'm just gonna duplicate this five times. And then I just kind of drag these over. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here and select my machine. So you can do this on any cutting machine. Today I'm going to use my Explore. And then I'm going to go ahead and click Make It. Okay, so here is the important part. Now this is why I wanted to show you how I loaded my mat first. So remember, all of my little squares are going to be, um, they were placed on the mat in two inch um, square increments. So what I'm going to do now is I'll just kind of pull these down so I can have some room as I go. But what I'm going to do is I am going to just pull these towards the center of each of those circles so that I know that when I send this through my machine, that these little circles are gonna cut in each of the boxes. So you can look down at your mat as you go and make sure you're placing them in the right spots. There you go, perfect. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click continue. And it's just gonna locate my air. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my material, and I have my dial set on custom. Um, sometimes it's easier for me just to keep it on custom with the, um, the Air 2 and then just kind of browse my material because I'm so used to doing that with my Maker and my Joy anyway. So uh, let's see, I'm down here in paper, and I'm going to select heavy patterned paper. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and select done. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load my uh, mat into my machine and we're going to be able to cut five pieces of different patterned papers all at one time. Okay, so now I can just go ahead and open up my machine. Does anyone else get super excited when it does that? I think it's so pretty when it slowly opens. Um, if you missed the tutorial that I just did on how I decorated my Explorer 2, I'll link it up here. Um, I had so much fun doing that and it just brings me so much joy every time I um, get to use it. So now what I'm going to do, again, I have all five pieces lo loaded at the same time. So instead of putting them through individually with, with, and just cutting one circle at a time, what I did was I was able to place them all at once and then just arrange them accordingly on the mat and design space so that they would cut just where I wanted them to. So I'm going to go ahead and load my my uh, mat and then I'm going to click this Cricut button when it starts flashing just like this and it's going to go ahead and then cut where I manually drag, um, dragged around those circles in design space. So there goes the first one and the second one. So easy! So I didn't have to unload in between. 
Now you can do this with other projects as well. So if you were doing, um, not this particular project, you would want to use this with paper, but if you wanted to do another project where you had multiple different, um, pieces that are uh, colors that you were going to load on your mat and send through, you could arrange um, your materials accordingly on your mat and then have them um, all set up in design space to do it all at once. Where you want to be careful is if, for instance, let's say you're working with HTV, you would want to be careful if you are using very different types of HTV, such as if you were using uh, um, glitter and then you had also just regular HTV because those have different cut settings. So you are, kind of want to make sure that your um, materials that you're all sending through at the same time have the same cut settings because that makes it easiest. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and unload and now I have all of these little circles cut out perfectly the first time on the mat. And it was so easy because now I don't have to send that mat through five different times. Now they're all cut out at one time. So now when working with paper, I love using this little spatula tool. And what I do is I just bend my mat just a little bit, enough to get my little spatula tool right under, and then I can just take them off. And this um, prevents any type of curling or tearing. So it's just a wonderful little tool to use. And this is a very brand new mat. So it, whoops, that one almost, but it'll be okay. Um, so it's really important to just be really careful when you have a brand new mat because that is so sticky and your materials may have a little bit of a harder time coming off, but they do come off. Okay, so now I have those all ready. Let me zoom in and I will show you how to put these little magnets together. Okay, so we have all of our little pieces of scrapbook paper. These are so cute and they just really look like summer um, colors and prints. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our Mod Podge and just make sure it's shaken up. I haven't used it in a while, so I just wanna make sure that it's all really nice and ready to go. And we'll take that little top off. And what we're gonna do is we can even use some of the stuff that's in the top since it just sh um, shook it up. We are going to flip all of these over. So you'll notice when you see them in person, there's like a rounded side and then more of a flat side. So we wanna do it on the flat side. And we're gonna flip them all over. And if you do not have a little foam brush, I'll link these because I buy them in bulk and I have a zillion of them. Um, so it's really nice because then if you feel like you don't really wanna wash them out, you can just toss them. <laughs> but if you have time, it's nice to reuse if you can. Um, but what you can do if you do not have a foam brush is you can literally just take your finger. In fact, this is the first time I've ever used a foam brush um, doing it. I've always just used my finger, but I was um, thinking of a cleaner way to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to brush on some Mod Podge right onto the back of the glass bead. And you just need a pretty light layer. And then once I have that brushed on, I can take one of my little pieces of scrap paper and I'm gonna put it pattern side down so it's gonna shine through. Okay. And I'm gonna just really press it down and then I'm going to take my Mod Podge and I'm just gonna seal it on there by putting a layer right on top of that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and brush right on top. And I will go ahead and let that dry. So then I'll just move on to my next one and just put a layer right down. And this dries clear, so you don't have to really worry. Um, it'll dry nice and clear. And then again, take another little circle, lay it down, trying to think of how I did this before I had a Cricut machine because I was making these when I was just a newlywed and I did not have a Cricut machine. I must have just just cut it with scissors, of course, because that would have been the only way unless I got one of those hole punches um, or not hole punches, but you know, those little little die cut punches um, that you can get for scrapbooking and, and stuff. So, okay, so I'm just adding that layer. But I love this, and these make really nice gifts. Um, if you wanted to just, you know, give something to a friend just to brighten her day, or if you were gonna do these for the holidays, you could make little um, Christmas ones. It's just really fun. Um, I And it's fun because the ones I used to make were, um, you know, I did like some for um, red, white, and blue. So um, I did little patriotic ones for the summertime. So fun, back when, I had all the time in the world to just craft <laughs> and personalize things, but 
um, this is one of my favorite crafts that I used to do. So I just thought I would share it on here because it's just really sweet and fun and makes a fun little, you know, I'm thinking of you gift for somebody. So again, sealing the tops of them. I'll go ahead and do these last two. Okay, so I'm just placing that last little one right over the little gem here and sealing it up. And now what we're going to do is we are going to wait for these to dry. So you're going to want to set them aside and let them dry completely. And then once they're dry, what we'll do is we will take our hot glue and we will attach the little magnets to the back and I'll turn them over and show you how they look. While they're drying, I'm just going through and just kind of cleaning up any of the Mod Podge that was just sneaking around the edge. And you can just do that with a finger or you can do that with um, a paper towel or anything um, just to kind of clean up the edges and get it all looking really nice. Okay, so once they're dry, what you're going to do is you are just going to take your hot glue and you're going to add some glue to the back. Perfect. And then you're just going to take one of your little magnets and place it right on the back. It's really, really easy. And then once that is completely dry, just give it a couple presses, hold it for just a second, and then you can turn it over and you have your design. Isn't it cute? How cute are those going to look on the fridge too? It just really brightens up your fridge space and especially again if you're making these for a holiday or a season, it kind of gives your, your refrigerator just a little fresh look which is really fun. So I'm just going to do the next one just like this. Again, hold it for a couple seconds. Just make sure it, it's where you want it to be. And then this is the second one. This one had that cute little chevron look. It's super cute. Okay, so continuing on with the next few. And it doesn't take much glue. Pressing on the magnet. I love these. I forgot how much I love these. I actually haven't made these for quite some time, so this is going to be really fun. Okay, and this one was a little mint one. It's a little hard to see on camera, but in person it's so pretty. So we got a little cute little spring summer theme going. And goodness, scrapbook paper is gorgeous. There, there's so many different kinds and packs. So if you even got, you know, a pack of paper, then they all come coordinated. So you could really create some wonderful things. And this is a really affordable project. I think the the little bag of um, stones was very affordable um, and then of course you have your magnets and your paper but it's um, a very inexpensive little project that that really is um, so fun and personal and then our last little one right here but um, yes with the pattern paper goodness you could really create some really pretty looks with it and then the last one is all set Okay, that last one had that really pretty pop of yellow too. So that is how you make those cute little magnets. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I thought it was really fun. Plus, um, it's a wonderful little um, lesson on how you can cut multiple materials through your machine at one time. So you save a lot of steps and a lot of pr uh, part of your process by just getting all those pieces of paper down on your mat at the same time and running them through at all um, at once. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you found this helpful and you're going to make some of your own, let me know. If you've made these before, let me know too. They're really, really fun but let me know if you're going to try this out and leave me a little comment if you found this fun please give me a little thumbs up and I will see you all in the next video